So in part two of how we monitor your money, we're gonna talk about how working as a team, even when we're arguing with one another, helps bring greater accountability and hopefully a better outcome for you. So first things first, this marks five years that we've been doing either a written or a video commentary. I have no doubt that many of them have sucked. I know you haven't watched many of them, but I hope a few have come to you at the right points in time. We've had a few scary market moments. We've gotten some great feedback over the years. At the end of the day, as we've said from day one, we're not here to pretend to be perfect. We're just trying our best to put forward a perfect effort and hope that you will judge us on that. That being said, hopefully one of the better videos uh, today will be part two of how we monitor your money. We're gonna talk about the team. I talked about this last week that, you know, so many people in our industry talk about team and the need for partners and then really don't have one themselves. And so from its infancy here at 10 Capital, we've worked to have a very collaborative thing uh, with external partners, which we'll talk, touch on next week with our clients. Uh, this week we're gonna talk about with our colleagues. And so we're gonna touch on two specific things. One, the investment committee, and two, the advisor committee and the important role they play in helping us uh, do the work that we do for you. So the first group we're gonna talk to you about today is the investment committee. So this is something that's had many shapes and forms, but has been in existence since the founding of 10 Capital. It's currently consisted of five people. It's a group I'm very excited about, uh, led now by the man to my right, Brian Betts, as our chief investment officer, helping pull us all together and, and organize the thoughts. 15 years on Wall Street, brings a wealth of experience. Uh, Adam Gelhausen, over 10 years at Wellington in the institutional side as well. Mike Vickerman, 25 years of managing uh, client portfolios for his firm. Ryan Fisher, top grad eight years ago out of UW uh, with economics degree that we yanked in, who's become my right-hand man now for quite some time, uh, helping me uh, help you all. Uh, and then, of course, uh, myself. So with that and what that group is trying to get accomplished, I'm going to turn it over to Brian. Great. So, you know, as, as Tim mentioned, you know, we, we've formed this investment committee and really the main purpose of the investment committee is first to set an overarching investment philosophy for the firm and then build portfolios for clients that meet their specific needs, right? And making sure that those portfolios incorporate the overarching investment philosophy. But that's not the end of it, right? We also have to evaluate the performance of the portfolios over time, track their performance, make sure it's what we would expect them to do, mm -hmm. and also vet new ideas and you know evaluate if we need to make changes to those portfolios over time. And so really that's the core of what we're trying to achieve on the investment committee. Yeah, we really find that when you take that core philosophy and have that well-defined, really understand that we're not here just to work in a land of theoretical. At the end of the day, it's pragmatic. It's about your life and your goals and looking at that piece. Um, and then also bringing in, again, a given time in the markets or in times in client lives and melding all those three pieces together within a great debate and dialogue. It's really helpful. Again, as, as Brian alluded to, this is not meant to be a combative committee, although there certainly can be great debate within it. Uh, what we find more times than not is that it isn't about a winner-take-all idea. It's really about these new complementary pieces that begin to take shape. Um, and Brian just led his first one this week and uh, did a fantastic job of keeping me on task, which is his biggest challenge. Um, but again, really fostering that discussion in a, a constructive way. And so Great, great one under your belt. The second key part is our advisor meeting. So this is something we've done every Thursday since the firm started, is that we take whatever's coming out of the investment group and committee, we take it into the advisor group. We're accountable to them just as we are to you. Uh, they really are an extension of you to how are the portfolios are going? Is there a new type of a strategy that we need to design based off the client feedback we're getting and the client needs, whether that's through just general comments or specifically as we're building out plans we've had this happen where we're like, we've got this gap here we need to create a new strategy for or find a new strategy for, as long as just questions and concerns that go into these commentaries, that go into some of the other materials that we put back out to you, all of which, again, at the end of the day, 
all this is about you, not trying to look smart, but be effective, right? Uh, I've always said we wanna have a very pragmatic approach to how we run portfolios. This is not about our egos. This is about helping you get to where you wanna go um, and doing the best work we possibly can for you. I'll end this week's commentary with a quick story I had um, a client come up to me a few years ago and said, you know, that was a great talk on the emotional dangers of investing. Problem as I see it is you're human too and you're prone to those same emotions. So why would you be any different than myself? And, and I thought it was a very astute, great question. Um, but what I shared with him at that time is really what this video is about is I wouldn't pretend that left to my own devices, I, I am special or that I am any different. I, I do have perhaps a few more experience uh, doing, but all that aside, uh, I feel like I need guys like Brian, like Mike, like Ryan, uh, like all the advisors here at 10 Capital. And quite frankly, oftentimes clients uh, asking us great questions, calling us to account to do our best work. We don't get to trade in isolation, which is the point I made to him. We don't click a button in our basement office um, and only we know what we've done. And I've heard plenty of those stories after elections or on Christmas Eve of 2018 when people did some things that really created some irreparable damage uh, to their long-term wealth. You know, here, not only does everything have to rise through the merits of our committee and then the advisor committee, um, but if we do anything, and you well know this, and trade it, it then has to be held account uh, to a thousand different people who know what we've done and be able to explain and rationalize that. So that's that process that we think, again, nothing will be perfect, but will create so much better outcomes uh, working together, all of us, uh, for you. And at the end of the day, that's what uh, we're about. With that, thank you so much. Next week, we'll talk about some of the external partners uh, and how they're helping you as well.